Morally bankrupt and riddled with disgusting juvenile humor, Postal Brain Damaged is a glorious mess of a game that's sure to put an immature smile on your dumb face. I shoot dicks for a living. Launching for PC on Go Figure 6-9. 69, dude! PBD is a franchise spin-off that takes the most outrageous elements from controversial open-world FPS series Postal and stuffs them into an old-school, stage-based boomer shooter. In my opinion, this is the way Postal was always meant to be played. It's faster, it's filthier, and best of all, it's more fun. But is it for you? Let's put Postal Brain Damaged under the Mega the Microscope to find out. We'll start with what matters most, gameplay. When it comes to weapons, instead of throwing dozens of slight variations at you as do so many shooters, Postal Brain Damage gives you nine unique murder machines. There's Postal Dude's trusty shovel, a smart pistol with lock-on capabilities, a grappling hook shotgun a la Doom, and then there are weapons that only Postal could pull off. A holy hand grenade launcher from Monty Python, a dildo launching longbow, a vacuum that shoots cats, and when all else fails, when you factor in each gun's special ability, be it the Nail Biter's Freeze Time Bomb or the Brainfucker Gun 69000's AoE Electricity, not to mention the number of power-ups scattered about each map, you realize you're pretty well equipped to handle any enemy. And boy will you face some, 48 to be precise. Exploding Mexican jumping beans, anti-vaxxers, 5G death towers, furries, and even COVID itself. Each enemy is more offensive than the last, but more importantly, they're mechanically distinct and fun to fight. As you probably surmised at this point, there's not much non-combat to be had in Postal Brain Damaged, so I'll be leaving this micrometric unscored. That brings us to PBD's UI, which in my opinion needs some work, and here's why. On consumption, certain special abilities will block half of your already visually bombarded screen, an effect that won't dissipate until you pissipate it away. Second, the lack of any map, whether on the HUD or in the menus, makes getting stuck a little easier than it should be. And third, while the menus are serviceable, I really wish the codex was accessible in-game instead of only in the main menu. So often I'd stumble upon some insane new monstrosity and want to read about it in my Not Safe for Work Pokedex, but just couldn't. Moving on, I was pleasantly surprised by PBD's boot times and didn't encounter any glitches during my playthrough, which I suppose is a small miracle considering that Postal 4 players are still discovering new bugs for a game that came out in 2019. Postal Brain Damage is made up of three themed chapters, each of which contain five unique maps. There's an impressive degree of environmental variety on display here as you delve deeper into the disturbed dream mind of Postal Dude. You'll slink through sewers, pillage a peaceful suburb, incinerate a furry convention, and raid Elon Musk's Death Star. Sorry, Leon Dusk's Dusk Star. And for what, you ask? I don't know what I expected. At the end of each chapter awaits a refreshingly nuanced boss fight. Whereas a majority of boomer shooter bosses feel static and can be conquered by circle strafing, the three PBD bosses are tough and require real strategy to take down. Given the game's low price and emphasis on speedrunning leaderboards, I envision most players getting more than their money's worth here. While I can't call PPD's intentionally outdated art style impressive, I can say that what's here is a delightfully disgusting assault on the senses. As for music, I was worried when the game devs informed me in my review copy message that the music wouldn't trigger during combat. In a weird way, though, I'm happy it didn't. The backing tracks in PBD are a wonderful, light-hearted change of pace from the typically relentless shred metal that accompanies most boomer shooters. I don't have much to say about the game's sound other than that we desperately need more of it. As is, there's no footfall sound effect when you're running, which can prove a little jarring. Each enemy death sounds like a squished watermelon. And Postal Dude himself has maybe 10 to 15 admittedly well-voice acted catchphrases that will trigger at random. I'd love to see some more added as they can currently get a little old. But that's about it for me, boys and girl, so let's wrap up with some scores. In conclusion, Postal Brain Damage exceeded my expectations and is a must-play for any fan of this genre. Just make sure to play it alone, or at least with friends as depraved as are you. After averaging up our micrometrics, PBD earns a solid mega score of 3.4 out of 5. Until next time, this is Scope, and thanks for watching!